Welcome to another episode of Trial Site News. On today's show, we're going to be discussing an emerging lawsuit from members of the armed services who are taking on the Department of Defense and the FDA leadership over the vaccine mandates. We'll discuss what is happening here. And so, from Trial Site News, I am Adrian, and our episode is starting right now. So the question has been asked, are the Department of Defense COVID-19 vaccine mandates unconstitutional and unlawful because the vaccines remain experimental, meaning still being issued under an EUA, thus requiring informed consent? Well, the plaintiffs of a recently filed lawsuit allege that this is the case, that the COVID-19 vaccines from both Pfizer's BioNTech BNT162B2 and Moderna's mRNA1273 remain experimental and that no vaccines should be mandated without informed consent based on multiple federal statutes raising such requirements for, quote, unlicensed product including 10 U.S.C. 1107A and 21 U.S.C. 360BBB3 otherwise known as the informed consent laws. The mandates were issued by the Secretary of Department of Defense, otherwise known as the DOD, Lloyd Austin III, who is named as a defendant in this case, as well as Janet Woodcock, who is the Principal Deputy Commissioner with the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, or the FDA, and Xavier Becerra, Secretary of the Department of Health and Human Services. The plaintiffs allege that the COVID-19 vaccine mandate issued back on August 24th of 2021 by Secretary Austin III was unlawful, even though the FDA formally approved the COVID-19 vaccine from Pfizer's BioNTech called Comirnaty. And this perhaps shouldn't be surprising, as we here at Trial Site News did report that the Comirnaty approval was certainly unorthodox. See, while the Comirnaty product was approved, there was no such product in distribution in the United States. Consequently, the FDA declared that the investigational product under emergency use authorization, known as BNT162B2, would continue to be used, even though Comirnaty was not around. And so mandates followed shortly thereafter, just as we here at Trial Site News suggested that this might be the case, as the timing of the approval and the mandates at both the local and federal levels seemed almost to be working in conjunction with each other. So, back to the plaintiffs. They are claiming a fundamental, quote, right to refuse unwanted medical treatment as a fundamental human right. The plaintiffs are seeking both a declaratory and injunctive relief against the executive branch agency charged with America's defense, as well as the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, who are both, according to the plaintiffs, in, quote, gross violation of the informed consent laws, as well as relevant provisions of the Public Health Act governing the regulation of biologics. These would be 42 U.S.C. 262 and the Administrative Procedure Act 5 U.S.C. 551 in addition to existing rules, regulations, and procedures. The plaintiffs are also seeking injunctive relief against the DHHS and various sub-agencies such as the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, otherwise known as the CDC, and the plaintiffs seek a jury trial. So let's talk about the issue here. Well, the issue before the court really comes down to the question of whether the plaintiffs are being forced to submit to these medical procedures, the vaccination, involving what they purport are, quote, experimental biologics. If they resist, they may be discharged from the service under dishonor, thus branded with less than fully honorable discharges for exercising their inalienable, God-given rights by what the plaintiffs refer to as the, quote, interlinked, codependent, and unlawful actions and inactions of all of these agencies. Now, referred to as members of the Armed Forces for Liberty, or MAFL, they claim to not only represent themselves, but also other members of the MAFL and of the class and subclasses of similarly situated persons that they represent. So who are the plaintiffs in this lawsuit? Well, you have Joshua A. Wilson, members of the Armed Forces for Liberty, Michael Gruthusen, Ryan Madigan, Derek Gibson, Stephen Brown, Benjamin Walker, Scott Wells, and Brittany Puckett. These soldiers represent all branches, including the United States Armed Forces, meaning the Air Force, Army, Marine Corps, and Navy, active, reserve, and guard. 
and there are subclasses of plaintiffs. This includes the subclass of service members who have taken any of these series of shots and have been injured as a result. These are known as the Vaccine Injury Subclass or the Vaccine Injured Plaintiffs, or those who have had documented medical contradictions and medical opinions advising against the shots who are being denied exemptions. Other subclass members include those who have already been infected with SARS-CoV-2, who are claiming natural immunity. In this latter subclass, the plaintiffs argue that a large number of service members obtained immunity via a spike in Omicron infections. The plaintiffs argue, using information from Dr. Peter McCullough, that vaccination is contradicted for service members with natural immunity. Yet this medical fact has been intentionally ignored, according to the plaintiffs, and these service members have been or will be punished by the defendant. Now, the lawsuit is going to be filed in the United States District Court for the Eastern District of Texas. And as I mentioned earlier in the show, in addition to the Department of Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin III, you've got Janet Woodcock in her official capacity as Acting Commissioner of the FDA, and Xavier Becerra in his official capacity as Secretary of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Other named defendants in this case include Karen Kristen, Michael Dotry, Carly Gross, Summer Fields, Justin King, and Thomas Blankenship. Now, for the subclass of injured plaintiffs, what kind of specific injuries are we talking about here from the vaccine? Well, some of the plaintiffs have been vaccine injured and may still be forced to receive a booster dose. This may occur despite documented adverse reactions. The plaintiffs allege that elements of the military leadership, quote, downplay or refuse to report vaccine adverse event information associated with military members. Additional arguments from the plaintiffs allege that the conditions that qualified for a, quote, pandemic or emergency are not valid under any current scientific standard that would justify any of the defendant's actions that include, quote, issuances of emergency use authorizations by the FDA for unlicensed mRNA vaccines that are, in fact, genetic therapeutics and that are then mandated in violation of 10 U.S.C. 1107A's express statutory prohibition. This according to the plaintiffs. Additionally, the plaintiffs also argue that the current vaccines have all been rendered, quote, obsolete by ensuing variants such as Delta or Omicron, meaning that the durability issues associated with mutating pathogens cannot possibly justify mandating a vaccine known to be ineffective in preventing infection or transmission of the Omicron variant, much less illegally mandating the experimental EUA versions of those vaccines. Again, this according to the plaintiff's lawsuit. Now, what are the plaintiffs seeking in damages here? Well, as I mentioned earlier, they are looking for a declaratory judgment under the Declaratory Judgment Act, which can serve as the basis for an injunction. They also seek relief pursuant to 10 U.S.C. 1107 and or 1107A. This includes the Administrative Procedures Act review and the All Writs Act. The plaintiffs are seeking temporary and permanent injunctive relief and vacature of the applicable agency decisions, attendant to their claims for declaratory judgment and APA violations, as well as mandamus to compel the defendant, meaning the FDA, to comply with the Public Health Service Act as specified in the complaint. Now, of course, we here at Trial Site News will be keeping a close eye on this litigation as it goes forward, and we'll keep you posted on any updates we find with this lawsuit. And that, my friends, will bring our episode to a close once more. As always, thank you so much for joining me on the show today. From Trial Site News, I am Adrian, and I will see you all next time.